Hello and a very warm welcome to Madam MP. I am Bhavna Gulati Nayar. In this program, we make you meet your own chosen female representatives. And today we have a very special guest with us. She is a doctor by profession, a very senior politician in West Bengal, one of the founding members of Trinamool Congress, which is the fourth largest party both in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. And she is a third time winner from the Barasat seat in West Bengal. I am talking about none other than but Dr. Kakoli Khosh Dastadar. A very warm welcome to our show Dr. Kakoli in Madam MP. Thank you. Before we start talking with her, let's take a look about her political journey in our short report. All India Trinamool Congress fielded the highest percentage of women candidates in the 17th Lok Sabha elections. And the party shone with the second highest party of nine women MPs elected. Among them is a senior politician, Dr. Kakoli Khosh Dastidar. Dr. Dastidar is one of the prominent political faces of West Bengal. A doctor by profession, Dr. Dastidar is re-elected for a third consecutive term in the 17th Lok Sabha from All India Trinamool Congress. Born on November 23, 1959, she gained her medical degree in MBBS and postgraduate training in obstetric ultrasound from RG Carr Medical College and King's College London, UK. Dr. Dastidar has published many research works on test tube babies. Her family had a close connection to West Bengal and politics for three generations. Let's take a look at her political timeline. In 2009, she was first time elected as an MP in the 15th Lok Sabha from Barasat constituency, West Bengal. Prior to that, she stood as a TMC candidate from the Diamond Harbour and Havra constituencies in 1998 and 1999 respectively, but could not succeed. In 2009 itself, she was also the member of the Standing Committee on Home Affairs and member of the Committee on Government Assurances. She was also the member of the Committee on Members of Parliament Local Area Development Scheme. In 2010, she was the member of the Standing Committee on Labour. In 2014, she was re-elected to the 16th Lok Sabha for the second term from Barasat constituency. In 2014, she was the member of the Consultative Committee of Ministry of Railways. She was also the member of the Standing Committee on Home Affairs. In 2019, she won third time from Barasat to 17th Lok Sabha. From 4th July 2019 onwards, she is also the member of the panel of chairpersons in Lok Sabha. From 13th September 2019 onwards, she is also the member of the Standing Committee on Home Affairs. And from 9th October 2019 onwards, she is member of the Committee on Absence of Members from the Sitting of the House. Dr. Kagoli, let's take our first question and talk about your political journey. Uh, you are now a third time winner. You have made a hat trick from Barasat seat uh, from West Bengal. So how has been your political journey? It was very tough because uh, it's not that only I'm in politics for the last three terms as a parliamentarian. Uh, I started uh, taking interest in politics uh, in student life because we had a political environment in the house. My uncle used to be uh, an MP and another uncle used to be a minister in the state. So we had discussions and environment of uh, political discourse. I took interest and I started uh, joining in student political forum a uh, long time back when we had Mrs. Indira Gandhi as the prime minister and uh, from then on you know everything which was unparliamentary 
which was unconstitutional in the state of West Bengal. There was a lot of killing and torture on women and even villagers during the regime of the left front. I used to oppose and in that uh, you know, act of opposition, I found Mamta Banerjee. Or maybe you can say she found me. And we worked together. I have been with her for 43 years now. So I was with Mamta Banerjee. She got elected, then she became a minister. And all through I was with her. And uh, in 2009, she fielded me in the Barasat seat, which was then occupied by Forward Block. So I defeated the forward block and the date again and came here. Dr. Kakuli, I would also like to ask that you were a doctor by profession and you have written on a lot of journals and books on medicine. But what has have made you join politics and uh, especially Trinmool Congress, starting from Trinmool Congress? Uh, so how has been the journey from a doctor to a politician? I would rather say that I was into politics before I became a doctor. Because uh, uh, student politics um, attracted me when I was in class uh, 9 and 10. And I should take, like, you know, that time we didn't understand what politics was. But suppose somebody needed help for books, I would be there. Some social activity which would keep me involved in a slum dwelling children, I would be there. So that came before. Right. And I became a doctor much later in 1984. And this started in 1975-76, so 10 years. Right. So I am a, a socially aware person before I became a, a doctor. And after I became a doctor, definitely the social awareness increased because there are many patients who need care, who need help for medicines. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I think it is intertwined. And I uh, was the first person in the country to have started transvaginal Doppler ultrasound first person. Nobody before me did ultrasound this type in the country. Uh, Dr. Kakuli, as we all know that women are very poorly represented in our lawmaking bodies. Uh, but there was one party, TMC, that nominated 41% 40, uh, candidates in 17th Lok Sabha elections. So what you have to say that where at one level we are talking about women reservation in parliament but at the other level TMC nominated 41 percent candidates and a lot of women candidates from TMC have turned out to be member of parliament. Yeah, my salute uh, to my leader because it is my leader's wish that 41 percent women were fielded and after winning I think we are 37 percent after winning because out of 22 we are eight in Lok Sabha and even in Rajya Sabha out of the members there is a lady. So it is Mamta Banerjee who is trying to bring the women forward, empowering the women and uh, besides the uh, elected bodies of Rajya Sabha Lok Sabha in our state, she has started the Shayan Siddhya program that is empowering the women physically. She started the Kanyashri that is empowering the women educationally. And she started, you would be astonished, health scheme, the health card, up to 5 lakhs rupees per year a family is entitled to free health care in the state. But the card will be issued in the name of the woman of the house. The head of the family is a mother. So she is empowering women and she has fought a long battle herself to get recognition. And being a woman, she knows the woes of a woman. So it is all her credit. Dr. Kakuli, you are a very senior politician from West Bengal, a third time MP now. And uh, you are now also a panel chairperson in Lok Sabha, you sit on the chair. So we would also like to know about that responsibility. How do you um, face all the member of parliament uh, sitting in, at the chair and uh, how do you maintain that decorum in the house? Yeah, it is different because you see when uh, we are in opposition, uh, we jo just don't oppose for the sake of it. We have to talk uh, by the books, by the rule book. And uh, we ha also as opposition, we talk outside the rule book. We create a lot of hangama. Uh, I think the house belongs to the opposition. It is the duty uh, of the government side to run the house. Mm -hmm. And it is the opposition's duty to act like a watchdog and bring to the notice of the uh, government what is wrong in the country. So, the, we can put it through rules, 
we can be unruly also the opposition right. but when i am on the chair i have to go by the rules and i have to uh, maintain or order i have to on the of the house so it is vastly different both are vastly different from one another what do you think when women are in power the responsibility uh, increases on uh, women leadership as well um, do you think uh, the laws which are made are gender sensitive do you think uh, the parliamentarians uh, that talk about uh, democracy are gender sensitive because we have seen a lot of times dr kakuli this time that you have been very disturbed in parliament you're not very happy with the comments or with the with the way the 17th lok sabha was started our constitution is being trampled upon and people who have taken oath to preserve the constitution and the country and the citizen and to preserve democracy they feel hurt so people like us who have worked for democracy we feel definitely you are quite right we feel hurt and we still feel that the decisions being taken by the government are always not in keeping with the constitutional provisions mm. so naturally when the constitution is being trampled upon and the provisions being trampled upon what the founding forefathers decided for us after a lot of deliberation mm. many intelligent people sat through nights burn the midnight oil to give ourselves the uh, provisions we are just due to mere strength of numbers trying to do away with that which is not healthy and no political party is going to remain here in power forever absolutely so when somebody else comes then uh, they will also undo this wrong doing mm. they will definitely that day will come if not tomorrow maybe day after mm. but uh, as of today it is a sad day you are also a member of the uh, standing committee you are a member of the standing committee on home affairs tell us about that and role of parliamentary committees in strengthening democracy you see it is like a watchdog particularly standing committees are always scrutinizing the decisions and the papers and the working functioning of the ministries important ministry like the home ministry takes care of the um, peace maintenance of the country the internal security of the country okay so if there is a watchdog on that and uh, you know there are threats like the left wing terrorism is there then there is the other uh, ultra uh, religious groups so these standing committees you know particularly the home you know we are always taking note of every little thing that is happening and the decision ministry is taking there might be gaps anybody can make mistakes so they if the ministry is overlooking something standing committee fills up that gap so that is like for home i am saying but even the consultative committees are important because i am in the rural development and panchayati raj consultative committee now we would also like to know about your constituency barasat you are third time mp 15th 16th and now 17th lok sabha what do you think what have you achieved till now and what are the challenges or what are the responsibilities as a member of parliament for your constituency you see when i first won from that constituency uh, firstly a lot of areas didn't have uh, pakka roads mm. the villages didn't have pakka roads ambulance couldn't go right inside to carry a pregnant mother we had kacha roads mm. say uh, i i should say my constituency is a combination of uh, city and village and the cities had the roads the, the towns mm. but the villages i should say that in the villages 70% didn't have roads mm. now i can say that out of those 70% i have built uh, say 80% roads mm. so only maybe 5% 10% of the remaining will be done this time there was no electricity right mostly that is done on drinking water as well and drinking water was not there sewage cleaning was not there there was no underground sewage i have made sewage for two two constituencies fully uh, underground sewage system like we have in a modern city and electricity was not there i started off with solar lighting in the villages now there is electricity also schools have been upgraded hospitals have been upgraded 
So, there is vast change from what it was when I first came and now, but still some work has to be done. You are one of the founding members of Trinmul Congress and Mamta Banerjee being the Chief Minister of West Bengal, she is very close to you. I can say that you both complement each other. So, what is Mamta Banerjee for you? Oh, she's everything. I always say that she's my God. Because you see, not only me, you know, there was uh, one officer here. I don't want to main her, name her here in the parliament, in the government. She said, yesterday only, she said that CM is my God. Okay, so uh, she is doing so much for the upliftment of poor people and particularly women and girls that they think that she's God. And to me, you know, previously we used to be actually friends. We've sh shared food from the same plate, uh, slept on the same bed. It's like that. That relation is like that. But now she's CM. Of course, the protocol is there. So I have to uh, keep distance. I can't say that, you know, we used to go and play together. I can't say that. TMC is growing as a party. It is now the fourth largest party in both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So what are you doing as a a uh, member of parliament or as a politician to strengthen your party and your ideology? Our agenda is everything that is pro-constitution and pro-people. Mm. So whatever has to be done to keep the per people of India happy within the norms of constitution is our agenda. Okay. So that is uh, where we are working at to perfect those means. Dr. Kakoli, we will continue talking to you but it's time for break in Madam MP. It's time for break in Madam MP, but after the break, we'll continue chatting with Dr. Kakoli Khosh Dasadar, who is the third time MP from Barasat seat in West Bengal. Also, we would like to know about her personal interest. All this after this short break. Welcome back after this break. You're watching our special program, Madam MP. And today we have with us a very special guest, Dr. Kakoli Ghosh Dasada, who is a third time MP from Barasat seat in West Bengal. And in this segment, we'll talk about her personal interests. Dr. Kakoli is the first gynecologist in India to perform transvaginal doctor ultrasound. She has also written a manual of ultrasound in obstetrics and gynecology and a medical book on step-by-step -step transvaginal ultrasound. Apart from politics, she loves to write poetry. She has authored a Bengali book of poetry titled Kuhu Kuhu. She is also the chairperson of Women's Wing of All India Trinamool Congress, Banga Janani Bahini. Dr. Kakoli is also involved in many social activities. She has worked with Mother Teresa for poor. She is also running Amritika Shishu Bikash Kendra School for poor children from BPL families since last six years. These children are also taught music and other vocational courses. Her soul lies in providing quick healthcare delivery to the rural and urban poor. In her own time, she loves gardening, music, reading and playing with pet dog. She has recently adopted a retired CRPF dog. Her favorite sports are mounting, trekking, swimming and tennis. I am quite a domesticated person you can say because uh, I take a lot of time off from my busy schedule to maintain the gardens wherever I live you know. In my houses, I have gardens, I have a uh, lot of inclination towards farming, mm. vegetables and fruits and I do it and we don't buy any vegetables in our family because we are scared of the pesticides mm. and the chemicals that are being used which are causing cancer. So we do, uh, you know, uh, make compost in the house, you know, biological compost as fertilizer, as manure mm. and we do our own farming. And the people are doing, but I take a lot of interest, personal interest in maintaining the gardens. Mm. So that is a lot of interest to me. I love pets. Uh, I love taking care of animals. And uh, we have lots of animals in the house. So uh, I do it personally myself. The other family members say hi, hello, but I do it personally. And uh, I like to cook, though I'm not a good cook, but I like, I mean, it's a lot of de-stressing, you know. Yeah. If you're too stressed, mm -hmm. 
then you go into the kitchen and try to do something, then you will feel because all your thoughts go away that when you are trying to do that. Um, maybe once in a while I do that, I like to read or uh, you know I write poetry. Dr. Kakuli, you have also written a lot of medical journals and books on uh, about your profession. So, uh, will you continue doing that when you are in politics and how do you get that time? See, I have uh, tried my hand at writing uh, small essays and all on political issues, on gender issues, but uh, I hardly find time, that is the thing, because this needs concentration. You know, farming, you just go and start doing it yourself or putting the seeds and cleaning them up. It is not so much of an intellectual activity. But if you are writing a book or a medical book, it is a lot of intellectual activity. You do research work, you have to quote other people's works in medicine, you have to uh, read the research work of other similar workers all over the world, mm -hmm. read their publications and then you have to enrich yourself. Dr. Kakoli, apart from politics, uh, we have seen that you do a lot of social work as well. Um, you have thrived to work for rural and urban poor and provided healthcare services. You have also worked with Mother Teresa and worked with the poor people. You have provided uh, health services to them. As a doctor, you have, uh, and being in politics, you have joined both of them and tried to do social work. Tell us about that. Yeah, because when I was in school, in, we had uh, Christian missionaries, you can say, nuns, who taught us that the first thing is to share. Whatever you have, if you share with other people, you feel happy and I really felt happy. So whatever the training was and with Mother Teresa, I was looking after orphan children. Uh, that was uh, way back before I got married. When I got married and got my own children, I used to take them also. My children also would go with me uh, to take care of the orphan children. And uh, by and by, uh, what I have done is in my house, in the constituency, it's, there's a lot of space. So, I used to notice that, you know, little children of the villages of the poor people, they would stop going to school from the age of, uh, say, 7, 8, 9, after class 3 or 4. I tried to find out why they were leaving school. And it came to my notice that since they were the first generation uh, students, there was no educator at home to show their homework. So, they were shamed when they came back and they couldn't answer in the class. So after two, three years, after joining school, they would leave. There were dropouts. So what I've done is in my house, I have opened a, another school. You can say it's like a coaching center right. where hundreds of little children come mm. from the age of eight or nine mm. up to college going, particularly girls. Right. And I have employed teachers from my own salary. I pay teachers okay. and they are teaching the vernaculars, the English, mathematics, geography, science. Uh, different subjects, uh, I pay for them and they come every evening from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock and from all around the villages, these little children come to my house and there are hundreds of them who come and study and after that, this effort started 10 years back, as soon as I became a, an MP. In the last 10 years, you know, the girls have graduated also and they have passed the secondary exam, they have passed the higher secondary exam. We would also like to know about your family, Dr. Kakoli. Uh, because politics runs in your blood and um, uh, you have a very intimate connection to West Bengal as well. West Bengal is your soul, I suppose. So tell us about that. I am a telephone mother because I am always uh, tele uh, phoning my children, their sons. And for the last 10 years, definitely even before that, you see, I have tried to put maximum effort and maximum time to bring up my children and I won only in 2009. Before that, I used to look after their homework, their music classes, their games classes. Uh, I made sure that I was dropping them at school when they were little children and bringing them back home. I used to drop them to school and go to my clinic and then bring them home and when in the evening they were playing or something, I would go to Mamtadi's house. She would tell me around 8 o'clock that it's already 8, you go home because you have to feed your children. Mm -hmm. Because she was also introduced to them. And now they are both doctors, they are postgraduates actually. One is a gynecologist and the other son is a psychiatrist. So they have grown up, now they have their own work. But like I said, I'm a telephone mother, I'm talking to them all the time or sending WhatsApp messages all the time. Dr. Kakuli will continue chatting with you, but let us know what they have to say about Dr. Kakuli.
I'm very happy to relay this message uh, for my mother, Dr. Kakoli Ghosh Dastidar. No society can progress without empowered women. And uh, we are very proud that Ma is one of them in today's present day India. Ma is uh, a simple, almost childish human being. Yet she is a self made, uh, fierce, and extremely independent woman. We are very proud of her honesty, her integrity, her passion, her commitment towards her work, towards her people, and uh, towards her public responsibilities. And uh, we are frankly inspired by her fortitude and perseverance, uh, especially in the face of adversity. In all honesty, I haven't seen anyone work as hard or with as much passion as my parents. On the personal front, uh, Ma is like the sunshine in our home. She is literally like the nucleus around which uh, all of us revolve. It is remarkable to watch her balance her public responsibilities with her role at home and everything with a smile, everything uh, with good cheer and uh, staying happy. We just owe so much to her. Uh, we love her. I miss her sitting here in Cambridge and uh, wish her all the best and a greater success ahead. Dr. Kakoli, before we wind up, we would like to know about uh, about you as a as a person who's not in politics. What do you like? Um, do you like Bollywood songs or do you like uh, Bengali songs uh, or do you have interest in sports as well? And uh, we would like or we would also like to hear something from you. Yeah, I don't remember. I've written so many poems. There's a book also. I've published a poem a poetry there, book, huh? but uh, there is one about. Uh, you know, empowerment of women. And one about that, like, you know, we say Children's Day. We say Mother's Day. I don't subscribe to that. I think every day should be Children's Day. Every day should be Mother's Day. You should respect your mother every day. You should take care of the children every day. Absolutely. So to this effect, there is one. But I don't remember because I write so much that uh, I don't uh, memorize it. It's all in the book. My last question, Dr. Kagoli. Any message for the young people, for the women, uh, who do you, whom do you think uh, would be listening to you, your constituency? Um, who like, uh, who likes you, who admires you, would like to listen a message, um, an inspirational message before we wind up the show? No, I would say that we have to work very hard. Nothing comes easy. You have to give your best foot forward. Always work very hard within the books. Don't try to be hasty and step out of the constitution. You respect the constitution. Respect humanity, respect other people and you will get back respect. Dr. Kakoli, thank you so very much for talking to us and Madam MP, you're actually an inspiration for everybody. So that was Dr. Kakoli Ghosh Dasidar in Madam MP who is the third time MP from Barasat seat in West Bengal. We'll meet some other guests, some other female representatives next week in Madam MP. Till then, keep watching Lok Sabha TV. Namaskar. Thank you.